<laughs> Andre Mock. This guy's actually funnier too because he's such a loser. first in his career, not the mathematics. So like, he was sitting down in 1917 to a quiet dinner with his family, and he just inexplicably rises from the table and grabs an axe from the fireplace and murders his brother and his aunt and his uncle, just, just slices them up, and calmly, and just walks down the street, finds the first police officer he sees, and says, I have killed my family. And they send him to a mental institution, and they ask him, why did you do that? And he says, very eugenic explanation, he says, it's a matter of mathematical logic. There have been mental illness in my family. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> um, so he was in a mental institution for the rest of his life, and that's when he really worked on number theory. So he wrote stuff like this on like toilet paper and stuff. And you know mental institutions in those days are kind of crazy. So um, I can just imagine the nurse walking to his room and being like, yeah, this guy's fucking nuts. <laughs> Not even knowing that it's actually brilliant mathematics. Okay, so mathematicians against the odds. So one thing I feel like I want to bring up, because Euler was mentioned earlier today, Euler, Beethoven of mathematics, was blind for a long period of his life, and so a lot of his better works, including the e to the i times pi equals cosine, yeah. All right, so um, it was done while he was blind, which is sort of impressive. Um, the one I really sort of think is, is more interesting and more sort of like symbolic of this issue of mathematicians sacrificing themselves for the passion of math is Archimedes. Um, you know, he had the whole Eureka crown in the bathtub thing, and the, I, if I had a lever big enough, I could move the world. Um, and he also had eyes that glowed with the thunder of the gods. <laughs> I feel like that's the kind of PR mathematicians need these days. Um, so Archimedes, when he died, it was in the, the siege of Syracuse, and the Romans came through and they started cutting people up. And he was working on a proof. And um, supposedly, you know, the soldier came in and said, hey, get up, you're leaving. And he said, hold on, I'm working on this proof. Just give me a second. And the soldier's like, nah, fuck that, and he stabs him. Um, another, another sort of um, version of this story is that he said, don't disturb my circles, because he was drawing circles on the ground and doing a proof or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, either way, this story, true or not, has inspired generation after generation of depictions of it, leading to Sophie Germain who is really probably the first extremely successful public mathematician who was a woman. She really sort of pushed the envelope on that one. So. Oh. But she was a child during the French Revolution, and so she kind of had to stay inside her house in Paris because it was too dangerous to go outside. She might get shanked or shot by a cannon. So she <laughs> stayed inside and read her dad's books, and she read this story about Archimedes' death when she was 13. It was like, dude, if someone would die for this subject like that, I really should know something about it. So she started studying mathematics, and of course she's a woman, so her parents are like, no, you're not studying mathematics. Um, or wait, I should not go to that part yet. And, uh, her uh, achievements, elasticity theory, so like, what? the mathematics of, say, a drum that's being, has a weight on it, like what that, what, how that reacts to the forces, things like that. And did really groundbreaking work, work towards Fermat's last theorem, which I'm sure most of you don't know what that is. But it actually, like, it became an extremely important problem um, during the 20th century and was just solved in, like, 94. So, guy got a field medal for that, too. Um, so, yeah, her parents did, were not having it. They were like, why are you studying mathematics? You're a woman, you shouldn't be doing that. So she started sneaking and studying at night. And then they noticed she was sneaking and studying the night, so they stole all of her candles and all her clothes when she went to sleep, and they turned off the heat in her room to encourage her to stay in the bed to stay warm. <laughs> And so she like smuggled the quilt from her friend's house and like and like hid some candles so that she could study mathematics at night. And her parents were like, "All right, fine, you can study mathematics." So of course, it's still the public. I mean, bad enough her parents were against it. The public was against it too. So any university wasn't going to have her because she was a woman. So she actually corresponded with l'école polytechnique through a fake correspondence under a male identity, like remotely through letters. Um, her name was M. Blanc. She corresponded with this guy, Lagrange, who any mathematicians here will probably recognize that name, too. Um, so he was so taken by her work that he wanted to meet her. And he was expecting M. Blanc. But actually, it turned out being Sophie Germain. And good enough of a person he was that he was like, wow, this person's brilliant. I really don't care that she's a woman. And so he sort of like pushed for her to be included in the academy. Also, corresponded with Gauss, who is probably on the top three list of greatest mathematicians of all time. I just didn't really have time to mention him today. Um, yeah, so it was a pretty famous correspondence there, too. To which he, she used this fake pet name, and he later found out, and he was like, wow, she's really cool. And he sort of got over his biases of women. So she's good. Um, next, Alan Turing.
Turing, possibly my favorite human being in mathematics. He's often called the father of computer science because he essentially invented the idea of the computer. He did this thing called the Turing machine, where he said, what if we could create this machine that takes like an endless um, string or tape of commands and sort of can think based on these commands, which is everybody was like, that's crazy, that's crazy talk, right? So he pioneered the idea of applying mathematics to computers. Um, he also was instrumental in cracking the Nazi Enigma code during World War II, so he really probably was huge in speeding up the war effort, and huge because he kind of invented computers. I mean, it's kind of hard to give one person credit, but he was huge in both those things, so he was a true badass. So what kind of things could possibly befall such a badass? Um, so he was living between 1912 and 1954, and, oh, pictures. That one is a bomb, which is one of the things they used to decode the messages from Enigma, like intercepted Enigma codes. Um, and he built this thing to try to like, you know, de decipher them. Um, and the other one is a computer he, he invented that is really the first feasible stored program computer, meaning you could store a program on a card and run it through and that kind of thing. Um, so he was an open homosexual, which caused him a number of problems, but yes, we should really clap for that. <laughs> The first sort of tragic thing to befall him is that he had um, a relationship at the end of his high school career with this guy, uh, Chris Morcom, who died of bovine tuberculosis, and it left him heartbroken. And so he was a very optimistic child, but then as soon as this happened, he, become an, he became an atheist. He believed that all physical phenomena, all phenomena at all, including the workings of the human mind, were completely material. And so this sort of inspired him towards thinking, well, why can't we make a machine think? So like, in some ways, like his tortured, you know, existence from this event sort of fueled his research, which is all beautiful and tragic in itself. Um, next, after he sort of like, you know, saved the world a billion times, um, in his later years, he would have relationships with people that were pretty open. And at one point he had a relationship with this 19 year old guy named uh, Arnold Murray. And this guy robbed him, he burglarized his house. And so he went to the cops and said, hey, I just got burglarized, I think it's this guy, Arnold Murray. And they're like, well, how do you know Arnold Murray? And he's like, well, you know, I have a relationship with him. And the cops immediately arrest him for gross indecency. Because at the time in Britain, it was illegal to be homosexual. And he was very open about it. And you know, so there's this guy who is essentially is a war hero, helped defeat the Nazis, invented computers, like numerous other contributions to mathematics and science. And, they just sort of, and he's coming to them to complain that he'd been robbed. And they arrest him. And they put him in jail. And he had a choice that he could stay in jail for the rest of his life, or whatever, however long, because he's apparently a threat to the public. Or he could go through chemical castration, which meant that they injected him with estrogen to the point where his libido was essentially null. And so he gained a lot of weight, and he grew breasts, and he became extremely depressed, and he became impotent, and eventually he committed suicide. So um, he poisoned himself with a cyanide-laced apple, and then someone found him in his apartment later which is crazy tragic. It wasn't until like two th past the year 2000 that the British government issued some sort of formal apology for this. Wow. Um, a lot of people will say that the Apple logo is an homage to Turing, hmm. given that he killed himself with an apple and it's sort of rainbow colored. The designers of it claim it's not, okay. but people still speculate because, I mean, would you, if you were Apple and you knew you had a giant constituency who's sort of not down with that, would you really admit that? Um, but it's up for debate. It would make sense that it is, though. It kind of is a pretty clear representation. Um, so the whole point of all this is really that, like, to understand mathematicians and love mathematicians, we have to start seeing them in a different light as humans and, and see their struggles and their passions and their crazy and everything they do wrapped up also with their mathematics and not just, you know, the math itself. Um, and to that end, I have a song I made. <laughs> life as a rapper. <laughs> um, the unfortunate thing is that the video will not work unless I exit the thing and then just do it from the preview mode. 